Okay, the next item of business is a statement by John Swinney on Ferguson Marine update. The Cabinet Secretary will take uh, questions at the end of his statement. Therefore, there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on the Cabinet Secretary for around 10 minutes, please. President, officer, today's statement maintains the commitment given by the Cabinet Secretary for Finance and the Economy some time ago to update Parliament on progress in the building of the MV Glensanox 801 and Hull 802 at Ferguson Marine, and to do so in an open and transparent way. I am providing this update in the place of the Cabinet Secretary. The first issue I want to address is the Audit Scotland Section 22 report that was published on Tuesday. I welcome that report and acknowledge the legitimate issues that are raised. My statement will provide much of the update requested by the Auditor-General. The report criticises the bonuses to senior staff at the Yard in the financial year 21-22 and the process by which they were arrived at. The report rightly criticises the poor governance involved in the process. I agree with that criticism and assure Parliament that new arrangements have been put in place at my request to ensure, to ensure such an eventuality does not arise in the future. The Scottish Government stands by its commitment to the shipbuilding communities in Inverclyde and to our island communities that will rely on the vessels currently being built at Ferguson Marine. I deeply regret that there have been delays to the delivery of the vessels and significantly higher costs than were predicted at the time of the tender award. Given the concerns over costs, it is only right and proper that the Scottish Government conduct a robust assessment on the use of its public funds and that the request received from the Chief Executive of Ferguson Marine on the 28th of September, with updated costs to complete both vessels, is also subject to an intense level of robust scrutiny. Those estimates indicated that £21 million of additional funding would be required in this financial year to sustain work on the vessels. Our full assessment and due diligence on the Chief Executive's cost estimates is due to complete in the coming weeks. On the 15th of December, I updated Parliament on the need for in-year funding of £15 million to Ferguson Marine to ensure they could continue to progress the build of both vessels subject to completion of that work. Today, I am confirming that I am satisfied it is appropriate and necessary to allocate a further £6 million set out in the Spring Budget Revision published on 2 February, which will take the additional total capital funding for Ferguson Marine in the 22-23 financial year to the £21 million requested by the Chief Executive in September. Whilst the due diligence work has been ongoing, Ferguson Marine have continued to progress with the build, and the Chief Executive of MPNG has confirmed to me that the MV Glen Sanit successfully completed the dry docking period at the start of this month, and after the return to Port Glasgow, the yard achieved a major milestone in running the first main engine. This dry dock period has allowed the team at Ferguson's to make a detailed assessment of progress to date and what will be required to ensure a high degree of confidence in the robustness of the ship when it is entered into service later this year. Following this assessment, the Chief Executive of Fergus Marine has today written to the Net Zero Energy and Transport Committee with an update of overall progress in preparing a dual fuel vessel to be handed over. He has concluded that due to persistent design gaps and build errors, progress has been slower than planned for the 801 vessel. The Chief Executive has therefore revised the handover dates for both vessels, with the MV Glen Sanix now scheduled for autumn 2023 rather than the end of May 2023 that was previously estimated, with a contract backstop of no later than the end of December 2023. He has also indicated that 802 will be handed over in the autumn of 2024 compared to the previous timescale of the end of March 2024, with a contract backstop of no later than the end of December 2024. It is a matter of great disappointment that a further revision to the timescale for delivery has been necessary. I welcome the Chief Executive's assurances that Ferguson Marine will continue their best endeavours to deliver both vessels sooner than these dates. The Chief Executive has also set out plans for the MV Glen Sanix to have a sustained testing and sea trials period to help ensure a smooth entry into service later this year. Presiding officer, I am conscious that delays to the delivery of any project can lead to an overall increase in costs. That is why the Scottish Government will work with both Ferguson Marine and our technical advisor, CMAL, to assess any financial impact to the delivery of both vessels. 
I have therefore written to the Chief Executive to notify him that we will review his proposals and confirm our position on this in due course. Ferguson Marine, whilst acknowledging the potential for an increase in the total delivery costs due to the delay, state they are looking to offset any potential increase through income generated from commercial work. So one of our aims has always been to look beyond 801 and 802 and to ensure a sustainable future for commercial shipbuilding on the Clyde, which is one of the issues raised by the Auditor General in his report. We know that the Ferguson Marine team continues to pursue a range of opportunities to meet this shared ambition. I am pleased to report that the business has been successful in securing new commercial work and has recently entered into a contract with BAE Systems to support the delivery of their Type 26 frigate programme. This has, involved, this has involved the secondment of some Ferguson Marine workers to BEE Govan since January this year. Ferguson Marine has been clear to us that these workers are not currently required on 801 and 802, and their secondment is not diverting resources away from completion of the ferries. Moreover, such diversification helps to support the knowledge transfer and upskilling of the workforce across the industry. This is an important factor to ensure that these skills help support the shipyard to be competitive in aspiring to future contracts. Scottish Ministers remain committed to do all that we can as shareholder and as a government to help achieve a prosperous future for the shipyard. In support of the BEE contract, I can therefore confirm that the Scottish Government has agreed to provide a working capital loan of up to £25,000 with interest to support cash flow during the contract period. This is a short-term measure and the standard working practice for working capital requests from a public body and is in line with the terms of the Scottish Public Finance Manual. This work is a positive sign for Ferguson Marine and one that I am sure members will rightly support as the business looks to build an order book for the future. Presiding officer, no further delay in the delivery of these vessels is welcome and I fully share what I expect will be members' disappointment at this announcement. However, the challenges and legacy issues being faced by the team at Ferguson's cannot be underestimated, and after the appointment last February of the new Chief Executive, substantial progress has been made in facing these. I understand and appreciate why it is so vital that new vessels are introduced into the ferry network, but we must ensure that any vessel introduced is able to provide our island communities with the confidence that it will perform in service and improve the network. I have discussed this with the Chief Executive and made my disappointment at this delay very clear. He fully appreciates the critical need for these vessels to enter service as soon as possible to support our island communities, a belief that I know all members will share. We stand firm in our commitment that these vessels will be completed. I would like to put on record my appreciation to the workforce at Ferguson Marine, and I am sure Parliament will join me in supporting the continued efforts of the workforce who are determined to ensure the successful delivery of these two lifeline ferries. Presiding officer, as I have set out here, Parliament will be updated further when the financial due diligence work is completed in the coming weeks. This work is critical to strengthen our ferry network, which has been further enhanced by the procurement of four further vessels for the fleet. The Government recognises its duties to ensure sustainable ferry services for our island communities, and we are determined to fulfil that duty. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes uh, for questions, after which we will need to move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful for members who wish to ask a question and who have not already done so. Press the request to speak, uh, and I call on Graham Simpson. Thank you. And uh, can I thank the Deputy First Minister for advance sight of his statement? Let's cut to the chase here. The Glen Sannox and Hull 802 could each be delayed by up to seven months, and we still don't know what the final cost will be. More delays, more costs, and islanders left in the lurch. Yeah. It's a disgrace. Yeah. Now, Deputy Presiding Officer, I've been sent a, a CalMac headed document about the LNG commissioning delay for the Glen Sannox dated. December the 1st last year. The document says that if the LNG work is done at Troon, where the ferry is due to operate from, then for up to four weeks there wouldn't be an Aran ferry. And CalMac in this document say they don't want the Glen Sanox until it is fully ready. So my question is this, is that the real reason 
for the delays announced today. And my second question is the Deputy First Minister says he will assess the financial impact of delays. So how much extra is the government prepared to plough in to these ferries? Cabinet Secretary. I think on, on the first of the two questions Mr Simpson puts to me, um, the details that I've set out today are the assessment by the Chief Executive of the build programme of 801. And that is the rationale for what I've, of the details that I've set to Parliament. So there's no other reason other than the build programme that the Chief Executive has set out. And that's what I've reported to Parliament today. Um, Mr Simpson raises a fair point, which I acknowledge in my statement, that when there is a delay to timescale, there may well be a delay to finance. But what I want to assure Mr Simpson is that what um, I have been doing, what my officials have been doing and what will continue to be done, is there will be um, essential scrutiny of the merits of the financial case being put to us for any additional resources. And that has been applied. That's why I've got to the position today where I'm satisfied that the original proposition of £21 million of, of further cost in this financial year merits being paid. I was not at that position when I addressed Parliament in December, but I am now. But what I do assure Mr Simpson is, is that we are acting in, with all possible um, endeavour to ensure that the costs are contained and the estimates I've put on the record today are the best estimates of the information we have available to us, but we are challenging and scrutinising the detail of those estimates. Neil Bibby. Even more delays and even more millions. Who will be surprised? This is a scandal, scandal manufactured by SNP ministers and they all have their fingerprints on it. Hamza Youssef, John Swinney, Kate Forbes, Nicola Sturgeon, to name a few. After all that's gone wrong, it beggars belief that senior management handed themselves bonuses without anyone in the Scottish Government noticing. The previous turnaround director received £2 million. He was let off scot-free. This gravy train needs to end. This is not the government's money. This is taxpayers' money. So what is the Deputy First Minister going to do to get this money back? This is a scandal with continuing consequences for island communities. Even SNP MSPs don't seem to trust the SNP anymore. So will the Deputy First Minister now order an independent inquiry into this whole shameful debacle? And finally, if the concerns of the GMB union had been listened to earlier, then perhaps we wouldn't be in this mess. Instead of hiding behind the workforce, what are the government going to do now to listen to the workforce on the need for investment in facilities at the yard to ensure there's a future beyond the MOD work, beyond these two vessels, and the, and the mess the SNP have created. Cabinet Secretary. I think in all of this, um, the intention of ministers has been to support the development, uh, the retention and development of shipbuilding on the Clyde. If I go back to when Ferguson's went into administration in 2014, I led the government's efforts to try to secure a rescue of uh, Ferguson's. And the purpose of that was to try to preserve the very employment that Mr Bibby talks about and to preserve the employment of some, some of the finest people I've met in my life, the workforce of Ferguson's. And I know a number of them personally going way back in my parliamentary career. Good, decent people who know their skill. So I'm going to make no apology for trying to protect employment on the Clyde in relation to shipbuilding, because I know how important it is for everybody, for who we are as a country. But there are, of course, difficulties and challenges in the execution of this contract, and I make no bones about that. I've set out, and, 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 I, and I've, I, well, I think Mr Bibby's from a certain position asking me to apologise for that. I've apologised for it before, and I apologise for it again. It's a matter of deep regret to me. On the question of the bonuses, I think the bonuses are reprehensible. Well, the government didn't know about them. The government found out about them as a consequence of the audit work. We were never consulted about them, and we should have been consulted about them. So I find them reprehensible, and we are assessing what actions we can take in that respect. Now, on the question of an independent inquiry, obviously there's been a lot of scrutiny about the Ferguson's issues. Parliamentary committees have looked at that. Indeed, uh, Mr Leonard chairs the, the, um, the Public Audit Committee, which is looking at many of these questions. So I think it's, it's premature for me to say anything. And indeed, 
Um, as Mr Bibby knows, I'm not going to be here for much longer uh, in this place, so, uh, in this uh, front bench anyway, um, so I won't uh, uh, commit to any further inquiries. And the final point in relation to the voice of the workforce, I've listened carefully over many years to the voice of the workforce, and the government's doing exactly what the workforce wanted, and that's invest in that yard. We've been doing that, we get criticised for it, and yes, the investment has been put in. I, think, I don't think there's much support for investment in the yard from over this side, from what I can hear being yep. shouted at me in the background. But I assure Mr Bibby of the government's commitment to invest in the yard for the future. OK, there are, there's an awful lot of interest in this issue. Um, I'm going to try and get in as many questioners as I can, but the questions will need to be brief, as will the responses. It will not be helped if people are shouting from a sedentary position, which is just going to delay the process. So I encourage uh, members to treat each other with courtesy and respect. I call Stuart McMillan to be followed by Jamie Green. Thank you, President Officer. First of all, I think the Section 22 report further justifies my call for Tim here to have left that yard in 2021. The issue of the, further, the future security of the work is uppermost in my mind, but also the workforce and also the Inverclyde community. And when will the Scottish Government bring forward a small vessel replacement programme and have the legal implications been resolved to allow a direct award to the Yard? Cabinet Secretary. The issue of direct award is one in which the Government has got to proceed with great care for all of the issues that we're rehearsing here, and we have to make sure we get arrangements for that uh, correct, if it is possible to do so. In relation to the small vessel replacement programme, uh, the Government is committed to ongoing investment in the ferry network. Uh, we have obviously have uh, these two vessels that have been procured. We have four further vessels that will enhance the network, and we are looking for other opportunities to enhance tonnage. But, of course, the small vessel uh, replacement programme, in which um, Fergusons have contributed significantly through the construction, if my memory serves me correct, of three vessels already um, demonstrate the strength of the yard in that respect. Jamie Green to be followed by Colin Beattie. Uh, thank you. I'm sure people as far away as the Isle of Arran could hear SNP backbenchers applaud Mr Swinney on this statement. More devastating news for our islanders. Islanders who are simply scunnered at the endless delays to their lifeline services. The current vessel that services that route is nearly 30 years old. It's been in dry dock for three months and there's still problems with its uh, major overhaul. Can I ask Mr Swinney, what is the government doing right now to ensure that our islands are connected? He says they will deliver for our islands. Well, where are the ferries? Cabinet Secretary. Well, in relation to the situation in Arran, uh, obviously the Transport Minister and I are very conscious of the disruption that has been experienced because of the, um, the maintenance programme on the MV Caledonian Niles, and we hope that issue will be resolved um, very shortly um, to enable the two vessel service to return between Ardrossan and Brodick. We have, of course, enhanced the volume of sailings uh, on the Lochranza route, uh, in addition to the Isle of Arran continuing the single vessel sailings on that route. Um, Mr Green asked me about where is the ferry investment programme. Well, in my response to Mr Bibby, I just set out the fact that we have commissioned the two vessels, which are taking longer. I accept that they are taking longer than they should have taken. We also have procured four further vessels, which will be coming into the network over the course of the next uh, three years. Um, the earliest of which will come in 2024. So there are new vessels coming in to supplement the additional uh, investment that we made on vessels such as the Loch Seaforth, the Loch Frisa, um, and the other investments that the government has made. Colin Beattie to be followed by Katie Clark. Considering the level of funding being invested in the completion of the vessels, it's important that it can be clearly demonstrated where funding is being spent and what outcomes that is delivering. Can the Deputy First Minister advise what measures are taken to ensure transparency of how Scottish Government funding is being spent at the Yard going forward? Cabinet Secretary. So obviously, that material is the subject of regular dialogue. Uh, I speak, for example, to the Chief Executive of uh, Ferguson's on a monthly basis. My officials do so on a very regular basis, more frequently than weekly, um, and there is formal reporting on a quarterly basis to the Net Zero Committee in Parliament. 
and also to the Permanent Secretary and I eh, on a monthly basis. So there is a regular flow of information that is monitoring the specific expenditure that is underway to ensure that the legitimate issues that Mr Beatty puts to me can be properly addressed. Katie Clark, to be followed Thank by you, Jackie officer. We must not lose sight of the fact that islanders urgently need a steady pipeline of new ferries, but also we should be building those vessels in Scotland. We welcome that the Cabinet Secretary has made a commitment to invest in developing shipbuilding on the Clyde, but will he respond specifically to the calls for investment in facilities at Ferguson Marine? And will he be willing to provide any advice he obtains on whether a direct award could be made with this Parliament? Cabinet Secretary. I am uh, very happy to engage on these questions because I think we do have a shared interest in, in, in this particular point. What, what I can't commit to is what might be the nature of the direct award advice because there may be commercial sensitivity about some of the issues involved in that. But I do give Katie Clark the commitment that whatever the government can share openly with Parliament about this process, it will do so because I recognise the shared endeavour we are interested in, in protecting shipbuilding on the, on the Clyde. Jackie Dunbar to be followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you, President Officer. Scotland presents a substantial opportunity for shipbuilding in Scotland. Can the Deputy First Minister advise what steps are being taken to ensure that the Yard is in a position to compete for contracts arising from Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Obviously, we want the Yard to be able to operate in a commercial environment, uh, and there are a range of opportunities that are available. The, we've talked about the concept of the small vessel programme. Jackie Dunbar puts to me the pros propositions in relation to Scotland. Um, there are, of course, I, I had a meeting just uh, yesterday, Tuesday, with the leader of Shetlandlands Council, with the Minister for Transport, to discuss the inter island ferries. Uh, I had a meeting earlier this year with the leader of Orkney Council in the presiding officer's constituency to look at the issue of inter-island ferries there and their renewal, because many of the same issues that we're wrestling with about the age of the network are relevant in both the Orkney and the Shetland context as well. So there is actually a, a very substantial abundance of shipbuilding opportunity, which I think makes Katie Clark's point particularly valid and Neil Bibby's point about ensuring that we have yards that are able to undertake this work in Scotland, and the government is committed to that objective. Willie Rennie to be followed by Jenny Minto. John Swinney is a, a master at defending the indefensible, but even today he cannot defend this set of circumstances. He's got no idea about the final cost, no idea about the final delivery dates, and apparently he had no idea that these bonuses were being paid, even though his government owns the yard. So what guarantee can he give that this will be the last statement of its kind about these ferries? Cabinet Secretary. I think that I think that I think the, the pro, well, you know, uh, if, 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 if I am the master of defence, Willie Rennie is the master of overstatement, <laughs> because um, I, I have just set out to Parliament the timescale for the delivery of the vessels. So it's not appropriate for Mr Rennie to say that I don't have an answer, because I've just given an answer to Parliament. And I've just given an answer about money. I've done it transparently and openly in the floor of Parliament. I'm not sure how much more transparent I can be about this. And in relation to the question of, uh, of bonuses, the government I, I, you know, became aware of these bonuses out of the audit process. The government was not made aware of these bonuses, and I've made it abundantly clear how much I deprecate these bonuses. And that will be, uh, and that's the, uh, and, and the government has obviously set out that position. In relation to future developments, well, I do hope that there is no need for any further statements to be made about timescale. But of one thing, I am absolutely certain. I won't be delivering them. Jenny Minto to be followed by Ariane Burgess. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The completion of the ferries is vital to the island communities that rely on them. It is in the public interest that the Parliament remains abreast of progress at the Yard. So can the Deputy First Minister provide any further details about how Parliament will continue to be updated in this regard? Cabinet Secretary. I, th I think the, probably the best mechanism for that is the reports that are made available on a quarterly basis by the uh, Chief Executive of Ferguson Marine to the Net Zero Committee. Uh, that provides full information to the committee, and obviously committees of parliament uh, and members of parliament are entitled to 
um, to, to make inquiries through the usual routes of parliamentary questions and other devices to find out further information if appropriate. Ariane Burgess to be followed by Donald Cameron. The Deputy First Minister will recognise, as I do, that island communities feel deeply let down by the ongoing failures in the delivery of this contract for Lifeline Ferries. Given his statement and the audit report, can he explain how the Scottish Government will give the certainty needed to the communities who are relying on additional vessels in production? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I hope I, I appreciate the difficulties we have with these two vessels. We have four other vessels that are in um, construction or procurement at the present moment, that uh, two of which will be used on the Isla routes, a further two will be used on the Sky Triangle um, to improve service there. And then obviously, out of that, that, that will give us six new large vessels into the network in the space of. Um, about the next um, three years. And over that period, that will then give us the opportunity to redeploy vessels and ideally mm -hmm. to be able to retain additional tonnage, yeah. which will provide resilience should there be any weaknesses in the network uh, that present themselves from time to time. So I hope, I, I appreciate the, the unsatisfactory nature of the situation that we find ourselves in now, but I hope Ariane Burgess and her constituents take some assurance from the fact that the investment programme of the government will result in increased capacity and tonnage um, and uh, more reliability in the years to come. Donald Cameron, to be followed by Willie Coffey. Uh, the Deputy First Minister has just expressed concerns, regret, deep disappointment. But the one thing missing was an apology. So after years of cancellations and breakdowns, after years of lost livelihoods, after years of anxiety for islanders about simply being able to travel to and from their home, will he now take this opportunity to say sorry to all those in our island communities who have been impacted by his government's complete and reckless neglect of our ferry service? Cabinet Secretary. I, 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 I thought one of the obligations of members of parliament, and I'm really surprised about it from Donald Cameron, is to listen to what people actually say. Because I think, I think Mr Bibby might be my witness yeah. here that I apologised <laughs> in my answer to Mr Bibby. So I'm not sure if Donald Cameron was late getting here. If so, then I suspect he should have been apologising to the presiding officer, or he's obviously demonstrated he wasn't listening. So I apologise to people again for the inconvenience and distress and difficulty that's been caused. But I also want to put on the record at the same time as all of this has been going on, the government's investment in ferries has been increasing very significantly indeed. Don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, don't, don't start shouting at me. Just don't start shouting at me. Listen to this for a minute. Just listen to it for a minute. Increased sailing. So when this government, a few years ago, there was no Malig to Loch Boysdale service. The government put the money in place for that to be the case. We it put a new boat onto the Stornoway Ullapool route, the Loch Seaforth. We've put extra capacity onto the Mull route with the Loch Frisa. So, and at the same time, investment, investment. If Mr. Lumsden would just stop shouting for a minute and listen to my answer, Parliament might be a slightly better place as a consequence. So, yes, there are difficulties. Yes, there is inconvenience. Yes, there is distress. There's also been a heck of a lot of investment as well. I would just repeat my call um, for questioners to uh, be listened to and the responses to be listened to, and we will get more questions in. I'll call Willie Coffey to be followed by Paul Sweeney. Thank you. Does the Deputy First Minister agree that in any construction project, whether it be ferries, bridges, roads, or even rail infrastructure, that it's crucial to apply recognised quality and management standards, particularly at the outset, so that clear design specifications are established in advance of agreeing project cost estimates and all to be agreed before construction is permitted to begin, and that these basic principles, if followed, along with a rigorous capability assessment of the bidders, offers the best assurance that all construction projects in future have a reasonable chance of coming in on time and on budget. Cabinet Secretary. I think, there's a, I think there's a lot of merit in what Mr Coffey has, has put to me. There's one additional element I would add on to it, 
and that is the necessary um, pragmatism to look at the emerging evidence about the implementation of a programme to have the ability to adapt and to revise the programme should the circumstances and the evidence merit that to be the case. So there is uh, a lot of what Mr Coffey put on the record is valuable project management expertise, but there also needs to be pragmatism to respond to the evidence presented as well. Paul Sweeney to be followed by Edward Mayne. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Ferguson Marine has no funding beyond completing hulls 801 and 802. The Scottish Government has not invested in capital to improve the yard according to the benchmarking report set out by First Marine International. The Scottish Government has not established a fund to fund builders' refund guarantees, which is necessary to win export orders. And unless the Scottish Government awards Ferguson Marine the small vessel replacement programme, the yard will fail. So, on all those scores, will the uh, Deputy First Minister agree to implement actions against all of those points as a basis for a new commercial shipbuilding strategy for Scotland? I, I think there's a, uh, I, I th again, there's a lot in what Mr Sweeney says. I hope he takes some comfort from my answers to Katie Clark and Neil Bibby, because I'm committed to a long-term agenda for Ferguson and taking the necessary steps to ensure that that can be realised. Some of what, um, you know, there's a number of elements in what Mr Sweeney put to me, which are really detailed and complex propositions, which have to be worked through very carefully. But I do give him the assurance the Government is committed to such a process. And Edward Mayne. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I want to clarify the word handover. You say the, uh, the vessels will be handed over in autumn 23 and autumn 24. Does that mean they'll be handed over fully commissioned with enough crew time, enough crew appraisal and approval from class to go straight into service on those dates? Straight into service in autum next, this year and next year? Or Cabinet does it mean Secretary. a further four-month delay? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I think... I, I, I... I actually don't know if I can be specific to the point that Mr Mountain puts to me. And I understand it's a serious point, but I'm not sure I can give him quite the precision of answer about what will be the stage of crewing. But what is envisaged in the, with the Glen Sanax is that over the summer, which is before the handover date, there will be extensive sea trials underway of the vessel uh, as part of the preparation for that handover. So I don't know if I'm technically equipped to give a specific answer to Mr Mountain on that point, but I will question that point and write to him in due course to make sure I can give the clarity that his question uh, merits. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. With apologies to those I wasn't able to call, um, we have overrun slightly um, and we now need to move to the next item of business and there will be a brief pause before we do so.